good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always told, out of voice of radio, so today we need to look at some reveals. Well, it's weird, okay? They're kind of from Mask of Change, but I'm going to start off showing you this new Tatsugiri, which is from Mask of Change, but they went and revealed the English version of the card so quickly... I never got a chance to show you the Japanese version of the card. Uh, and honestly, the English version we have is just better quality than the Japanese version. And I'm willing to bet the vast majority of you read English rather than Japanese. So I ain't showing you the Japanese version. It's just weird that it happened so quickly. It's kind of like the, the people running the Pokemon on social media were just waiting for the Japanese reveal with bated breath. And you know what? I'm into it. I hope it happens more often. English reveals, super speedy after the Japanese reveals. We know at this stage we're not getting English reveals first. That doesn't happen. But having them this soon after the Japanese reveals, yeah, that'll do quite nicely indeed. Now, it is the Tatsugiri I showed you the other day, but now it's the illustration rare, the secret rare version of it. And I love everything about this card. I love Tatsugiri as a Pokemon. I love the effect of the card. I love... Okay, I don't love the attack. 2 energy, 50 damage is rubbish. I love that it's got 70 HP, so that you get access to Buddy Buddy Poffin. I love that it's dragon type, so it has no weakness. I love that it's got a nice low retreat cost. Everything about this card is good, except for the attack. Literally everything about this card is good, except for the attack. So what have we got here? We've got the ability, which we now know has an English name, and it's Attract Customers. Once during your turn, if this Pokemon is in the active spot, you may look at the top six cards of your deck, reveal a supporter card you find there, put it into your hand, and shuffle the other cards back into your deck. We don't need to ask the question as to whether this card is good or not. We know this card is good. Honestly, one of the main criticisms I've seen about this card is that it's potentially too good. That it really lessens the effect of cards like Iono and Roxanne. Because, of course, the whole point of Iono and Roxanne is, well, you take prizes and then I punish you by playing these supporters, put you down to a low hand size, or we refer to them as comeback cards. They allow you to make a little bit of a comeback. That's the point. Well... Yeah, not so easy here, ladies and gentlemen. Not so easy at all. Because now, I just need to make sure I've got a Tatsugiri on the bench. My opponent plays something like an Iono or a Roxanne, puts me down to a two-card hand, and I'm just like, I'm going to attract customers. And but by, by, by customers, I mean supporter cards. And I'll look. Or maybe your supporters are your customers. But the point is, now I've got a supporter card and I am ready to go. We see, I mean, I've been cast into Pokemon TCG. I realized recently, next month will be eight years since I officially started casting the Pokemon TCG for the Pokemon company. Which is honestly kind of awesome. I'm a little bit excited about this. But in that time, we've seen cards like Boss's Orders or older versions of it. It's gone by many names over the years being ridiculously good and i have casted a bazillion games where the question is essentially can they get boss's orders if they get boss's orders they win or sometimes next person to get boss's orders wins etc well tatsugiri makes that a whole heap better i've given you a couple of reasons why this card could end up being really good the reality is it's just a phenomenal card and mew Mew from Celebrations was basically this, with 10 less HP and got an item card rather than a supporter. And generally speaking, like, yeah, in the early game, fine, getting an item is always really good. Items are good, but in a lot of turns, and especially towards the end of the game, where it really makes a difference between winning and losing, supporter cards are going to be more useful to you than item cards. So we know that Mew is good. We have seen tournament after tournament after tournament, years of proof that tell us emphatically that Mew is good. This is better. There we go. I do, however, need to give a shout out to the artist. Very distinctive art style. Asare here, absolutely phenomenal artist. Not someone who's done many cards. 
I'm going to be honest with you, but the, look, I, I'm not good at describing art. I'm going to say thick lines and vivid colours, and that is the most art-describing thing you're ever going to get out of me on this channel. But it seems, that seems like an appropriate way to describe it. And the one that came to mind for me, this Fortress. Because it's the only one they've done. Now, I apologise, maybe there's uh, some random promo or alternate art card, whatever. I used a Japanese card finder on a Japanese website. This is the only one that I could find. I did do that the other day and forget about uh, an illustration rare that wasn't on their database yet for another artist. But the point is, I'm pretty sure this is the only card they've done. They've now done two. They're very distinctive. I know people like collecting artists. And all I'm saying is, this artist has done two cards. And they're kind of amazing. Maybe this is an artist you want to start a collection for. It's a good time to start collecting. But they are not the only cards that we've been shown from this set. We've also been shown a new Agron. And if you're thinking, Wossy, here's what you're going to say. You're going to say this Agron is amazing, but it's a stage two and that's a problem. Yeah, you're right, unfortunately. <laughs> but it is really good. Let me tell you how good. Firstly, 180 HP. Okay, that's fairly standard for stage twos, but it's still pretty high. Now, the free energy during your opponent's next turn, it takes 50 less from attacks. It'll work sometimes. And we've got Metang now, so the free energy attack is not as unrealistic as maybe it once was. And being able to take a KO and then leave yourself with a Pokemon in the active, a single prize Pokemon with an effective HP of 230 is pretty good. But it's the first attack we're really worried about here. That is the one where we look at it and we go, oh, yeah, that could be fun, couldn't it? Because what we've got here is single metal energy, 50 damage for each of your Pokemon that have any damage counters on them. To put it another way, if all of your Pokemon, including your active Agron, have damage counters on them, then all of a sudden, you're doing 300 damage for a single energy on a single prize Pokemon. Remember a minute ago, when I told you this was a really, really good Pokemon, but it was a stage two? I meant it. This is a stunning Pokemon. Now, realistically, getting damage on all of them is going to be quite difficult. Generally speaking, when we do this, when we're trying to get damage on our Pokemon, we usually do it with stadium cards. So you've got Gapejaw Bog here. Always a good option at the moment. When you bench your basic Pokemon, you take two damage. So does your opponent. So you get damage on them, which is good. The damage on you isn't ideal, and you'd rather it was one, not two. But this is just an easy way to make sure all of your Pokemon are damaged. Now, to be fair, the Pokemon with which you start the game won't be damaged, which is a little bit of a pain, but it's not the end of the world. You're going to be okay. This is kind of cool. And then, you know, 250 if your Agron isn't damaged, 300 if they're all damaged. 300 for a single energy on a single prize Pokemon is nuts. Absolutely nuts. The question just becomes, can you get this out reliably and consistently? You are relying on Gapejaw Bog or something else to damage all your Pokemon. It is far from ideal, but I'm telling you right now, it's a single prize Pokemon that can hit up to 300 damage for a single energy. Maybe it's worth taking the time. I'm giving it between three and four Wossies. We don't give half Wossies. That would be barbaric. I think there is so much potential here. I love it. But wait, what if there was another Pokemon we could talk about today that damaged all of your Pokemon? There is. It's my old boy, Amolga. Now, several things I like about Amolga. Free retreats, love it. Attacks for a colorless energy, love it. Damages all of your bench, love it. Single colorless energy, 10 damage, Plus 10 to each bench Pokemon, yours and your opponent's. To put it another way, the only Pokemon that doesn't take 10 damage is a Molga itself. Which is actually kind of annoying, but because you kind of want a Molga to be damaged here. But look, a Molga's colorless energy. So maybe between a Molga and Gapejaw Bog, maybe we can actually start making this work. Maybe we can start getting that damage on and then hitting big with Agron. But I'm also thinking about a spread deck here. Spread decks, I have lived through times where spread decks were legit. I have. We ain't there. 
We've not been there for a while. But I've seen it, ladies and gentlemen. I've seen dry land. And maybe we're getting back to a place like that. Because remember the frost last I showed you the other day with the really kind of creepy and awesome illustration rare? Well, that's got an ability that puts one damage counter on Pokemon with abilities during Pokemon checkup, other than Frostlass. So now you're spreading damage of a Molga, and it's only 10 damage, admittedly. But you're also potentially spreading damage with Frostlass, and it could be multiple of these. It's one damage counter per Frostlass, but it does still work. It does still stack. You can have multiples of these out. And I showed you Brute Bonnet the other day, which, if you can spread damage around, free energy, 50 damage, plus 50 for each damage counter on the defending Pokemon. You don't need many damage counters to really start building up with Brute Bonnet. And we've got stuff like a Molga, basic Pokemon, single energy, that will just start damaging the bench. Things like Frostlass will start dropping damage counters using an ability so you can't even use a bench blocker. And I'm not saying this is going to work. I'm saying there's a chance. And that makes me very, very, very happy indeed. Maybe it's going to work. Maybe it's not. But I am here for it. I love this. I'm giving a Molga between four and five Wossies. Which I know seems like a lot. And I don't really care. Because you know what? If you want to spread some damage in the early game, you can. If you want to damage your own bench, you can. And it's got free retreat and attacks for a single colorless energy. I love Amolga. But I've told you that now. So now it's over to you guys. Tell me what you think about all of these Pokemon. Tell me if you think the Tatsugiri looks as amazing as I do. Tell me if you think the Agron could work even as a stage 2. And tell me if you think I'm being ridiculous when I say Amolga's that good. Go nuts in the comment section, but be nice! And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi. That's where we talk about Pokemon and a whole bunch of other card games. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all kinds of fun things. And get shoutouts on the channel like the lovely unknown one, who's been a supporter of ours for a long time now and is a very lovely person. So shout out to them for the support and the loveliness. But by far the most important thing as always... Look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.